There are 16 different adjustable hosel settings with the Titleist Adjustable Performance Guide. If you need to fine tune your hybrid, this video is for you. Hey golfers, I'm Thomas Campbell and I'm joined by Jackie Johnson. We're both master club fitters at the Second Swing Minnetonka store. Jackie, you do a lot of club fittings and the nice thing with Titleist is we have all these different adjustable options with the, with the setting and the hosel, whether that's the ferry wood, the driver, or hybrid. But what do they all mean? When fitting anyone into a Titleist product, the SureFit performance guide and the hosel adjustment is, is great. Um, just because you have so many different options to be able to loft a club up, uh, put it more into a draw or a fade bias uh, situation, oh. it's, it's a great tool for fitters for sure. Yeah, and also gapping. It's really, really helpful for gapping because a lot of times this might be the first club that a player is switching from an iron to a hybrid in their bag. And that hybrid that they're originally fit for or they buy off the rack, it may go too far or it may go too short. But you might not have to buy a new one. You might be able to make a little subtle adjustment to the loft settings just to help gap a little bit closer to help your bag out. With Titleist, there is 16 different settings. So, so if you take a look at where the hosel meets the club head, if you unscrew it, you can turn the hosel adjustments around to different locations. They are all basically from A, B, C, and D, all the way through one, two, three, and four. So the Titleist SureFit Performance Guide, you can Google it, you can search it online. We'll have it on this video for you to see. Um, it's very, very easy to use as long as you know how to take the club head off. Uh, you can modify it and you can work on your gapping a little bit and figure out help with bull flight as you mentioned. If you need to play a club that's a little bit more upright, a little bit fl more flat, you can make those adjustments there too. So for today, we are going to get Jackie to hit some shots. We have a four hybrid, I believe it's the TS2 hybrid, and we're going to talk about the differences. We're going to go to extremes. So we'll first start off at A1. A1 essentially is a standard lie and standard loft. We're going to play around with the C1 setting. C1 essentially is the most fade setting. So it's a little bit flatter and has about one degree less loft on it. We're also gonna play around with the other extreme. So we're gonna go to A3. A3 is the most draw setting. A3 essentially is two degrees more loft on it and it's two degrees more upright. We can also switch over to the higher setting with a flatter setting, so you've got B4. It also has two degrees more loft on it, but also it's a little bit flatter. And finally, we can go back down to less loft. We'll try the D2 setting. D2 essentially is less loft, but it's a little bit more upright to help with a little more draw bias. Jackie, I'm excited to see you hit some shots, and we'll talk about the differences in the settings. Let's go. Forget how good you hit hybrids. Oh, I love hybrids. Little pull. Okay, Jackie, so we have a 23 degree hybrid, A1 setting. So, standard setting to create some baseline numbers. We'll notice here, efficiency is pretty good. Smash factor of 1.46. Pretty, pretty impressive. I know you hit your hybrids pretty well, right? Yeah, my go to club. Um, five hybrid that I have in my bag, I can basically hit it a range of 20 yards. So, I, I really like hybrids, I like the feel of them, I'm comfortable with them, so not, not surprised by the numbers on, on the screen. All right, so let's first test the C1 setting. I was going to say that was a good one. That was a really good, that's kind of what I was hoping to see out of that one. Okay, Jackie, uh, C1, one thing I'm noticing here as a club fitter is you did pick up a little bit more distance when you had a little less loft on the club. So we'll notice here you went from 162.7 going 176, carry now 165 going 181, and your club speed was the exact same. So loft was doing its job. However, we noticed the ball was still traveling on that little left path um, which I was expecting it to maybe be a little bit more over the right side. Uh, you mentioned that it looked like the face looked a little more open. Yeah, I think like naturally, I, I'm used to hitting like my hybrids with a little bit more of a draw. So having it a little open kind of threw me off just a little bit. So I'm like, I was trying to 
overcompensate, I guess, with trying to keep it from going too far right. But yeah, probably more a user thing than club. It could be, and also the fact as a club fitter, you kind of know what the setting is, yeah. and you're probably just <laughs> trying to make up for it a little bit. Uh, but what we did notice is Loft did its job with regards to gapping purposes. Yeah. So the ball went five yards further when we would put it at the, the minus one or down to the C1 setting. So now I want to go to the other extreme. Now I want to go to A3. A3 should have a little bit more loft, you know, maybe a little bit more draw bias to it as well. All right. Definitely hit the screen higher. Chunky. Okay, so A3 setting. Um, we'll take a look here. What's interesting here is the efficiency number or your smash factor number dropped a little bit. Now you have more loft on the golf club. That would also make sense. You did swing a little bit faster, but you would notice your ball speed actually was a little bit slower than the other two settings. Once again, you got a little bit more loft. It's not going to maybe go as far when you got more loft. A little higher launch angle, a little bit more spin. You lost about three yards of carry distance and about six yards of total distance A3 versus A1, just by having about a two, de two degree loft difference. Yeah, um, you know, the first shot I pulled to the left there, uh, definitely can tell that the face is closed, right? So after that, I made a little bit a personal adjustment to kind of get it to go a little bit straighter, which obviously the next two were pretty good, right on line and a little bit higher, higher spinning. So. Um, yeah, it's what I would expect from that hosel adjustment right there. Yeah, it's, it's kind of what I was expecting for gapping. It's, it's pretty much spot on with regards to distance and, and gapping, just loft was doing its job. Yeah. So we notice you got that ball going a little bit to the left side a little bit. I want to see what happens. We still keep that loft up, but we try the B4 setting, which is going to flatten that club a couple more degrees to where you're at right now. Sounds good. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so Jackie, we moved you to the B4 setting. B4 essentially has the same loft as uh, A3 did, but the face is just a little bit more open or the line goes just a little bit, little bit flatter. Uh, we noticed the ball did go a little to the right, which is, which is interesting. Definitely flew the highest here as well. So we take a look at the, the height. You're 85 feet in the air with that particular setting. So going from A3 to B4, is it noticeable in the lion angle, or does it just look like it's got pretty similar loft on the club? Oh yeah, definitely. I definitely noticed the lion angle like right away. Um, I mean, yeah, having it being a little bit more flatter setting, you're typically going to see more height on the ball. It go a little bit more to the right. So, man, I'm not surprised at all by where those went. Um, but it's good to see that they're really similar in terms of, you know, distance. It did go a little bit farther, but I also felt like I probably made a little bit better contact with that setting, um, being in that flatter setting. Yeah, you did. If you take a look at your efficiency, your 143 versus 144. So yep. same loft. So you got, even though you swung just a little bit slower, you got a little bit more ball speed out of the, out of the club. Launched a couple of degrees higher. It's interesting that the spin rate stayed lower and that's going to be contact. For sure, that's yep. definitely contact where um, the other one was spinning a little, little bit too high and that's why I didn't go quite as far. But yeah, one, 176 um, with the just a little more out to the right side with total distance, um, really interesting. Okay, so finally, I want to switch over, last setting here, we're gonna go to D2. So we're gonna go back down in loft and then we'll see what happens. That, that was good. Well. Yeah. Um, so your club speed really wasn't any faster. It wasn't actually the fastest, but we'll notice here your ball speed was just almost the fastest out of the mold, but your efficiency at 1.46, because you had less loft, is that spin rate dropped. And yes, you had that one, you kind of drop kicked a little bit, yeah. that caused the spin rate to lower a little bit on that shot. Uh, but even still, if, if you look here, you can see 112, 116, 116, and then spin. That's the shot that I'm talking about. But even still, you're talking about 3,800 average 
yeah. uh, which is definitely less spin, and that's associated with the loft. 171 and 175 carry go on 190. Those two are pretty good. And the one you miss hit, I said, wow, you got away with that. So that's why we left it in there. Yep. So we chased out there. So it's forgiving with the hybrid there too, and definitely going quite a bit further. Yeah, I definitely, those two shots that I hit well, um, I mean, one point, what was it? 1.48, 1.49 smash factor. So definitely could feel like it just come off the face and, and felt really good. Probably the two best feeling that I've had through this whole series. But yeah, the one that I drop kicked, I did not expect it to go as far as it did, but um, got away with it, so. Yeah, I mean, I would ask you, I mean, if you hit a four or five iron and you drop kicked it, do you think it would go that no. far? Right. That's, so. that's, why I don't, that's why I don't play it <laughs> Right. as <I> often. <laughs> yeah, so you got away with that for sure. Uh, finally, I just want to touch on the landing angle and the height because a lot of times, you know, we have that conversation about whether a player should be playing an iron or playing a hybrid. What we notice here is loft is, is doing its job. So we take a look here. If we see the lower loft settings or adjustments, you notice C1 and D2. That's technically minus one. Uh, we'll notice 65 feet in the air, 71 feet in the air with landing angle around about 37, 38 degrees. So it was kind of a low chaser is what we got out of that. A1, the standard setting, your landing angle was at 40 degrees and the height was 72 feet in the air. And then if we go to the other two higher settings, so we notice when we went to plus two, whether that be A3 or B4, look at that landing angle, 43.6 and 44.3 with a height of 79 or 85 feet in the air. That's quite significant. That's a much higher ball flight where that ball was coming in. So it's going to come in and, and land like this as opposed to chase out. Right. And we can see that difference there between the, the carry and the total distance. So if, if you just kind of look at B4, carry distance 164 going 176, A3 carry distance going 159 going 170. So we're talking 11 to 14, sorry, we're talking 11 to 12 yards of stopping power. We go to the other end of the spectrum. We take a look at C1, 165 going 181. So that's 16 yards of stopping power. D2 was influenced a little bit by that drop kick that you had, but it did stop within about 20 yards. And you got 14 yards of stopping power with A1. So a lot of this comes down to the height the player is hitting it, how much speed they have. If they don't have enough speed and they need spin to get the ball up in the air, adding a little more loft to a hybrid or even to help with gapping is for sure going to influence the gapping piece. Yeah, I think this really is, when you're talking about Titleist sure fit hosel adjustments, when we're fitting um, anyone for hybrids or even with fairway woods and their drivers, um, being able to make these adjustments is really just, I mean, it's awesome. Cause you know, you can, as you can see, like there's a huge difference in each setting, right? So, um, that's what I love about the Titleist sure fit system is being able to fit someone e exactly where they need to be based on their swing and their swing speed, all that stuff that can really help dial it, dial it in. Yeah, and then sometimes golfers come in for a full bag fitting. Yeah. And a full bag fitting, that can be two, three hours long. At the point where we're talking about the hybrid piece, you know, they could be getting tired at that point and they may not be making the, the best strikes. But we know it's going to be very close. But if you end up tight the shore fit hosel setting or even a, another manufacturer that you can adjust you don't you, you can definitely play around with it and tweak it a little bit if, if necessary and then as a club fitter you know, if we need to bend that line goal we don't need to bend it we right. just can just put it in a flatter setting or a more upright setting there too so there's plenty of options we only played around with five options <laughs> as I mentioned there's 16 options and those other, six, oh, those other 11 options are going to help even get better. So maybe it's only plus one or, or minus one, or we're trying to maybe go upright a little bit or a small amount flatter there too. So there's a lot of options. There's 16 different options. Keep in mind with hybrid, you are going plus one, plus two, or minus one. If you have a driver and you're using the short fit hosel setting, it's in three quarters. So you go on plus three quarters, minus three quarters, or plus one and a half is what the adjustment setting is going to be. So it's going to be slightly different, but it's the same concept. So if you want to get dialed in, come to Second Swing for a fitting and we'll get you hooked up.